This is the plaintiff, Soy Chan. She says she awoke one morning to thick smoke in her kitchen. She couldn't escape out of the door because it was blocked, and she was forced to leap from the upper window of the apartment she rented in a two-story house. Red Cross put her up at a shelter because her place was totally destroyed, and the defendant told her it was caused by a problem in the back of the apartment, and now she's out over $10,000 worth of her belongings. That's what she's suing for. This is the defendant, L.B. Cespedes. He says this lawsuit is just the craziest thing because the plaintiff was the one who started the fire. She fell asleep while cooking rice in a defective crockpot that cracked and it exploded, causing the fire. Thankfully, it was contained to the kitchen only and nobody was hurt. He's sorry the plaintiff lost her antique stamps, plastic roses, and a 14-karat gold water bottle, but he owes her nothing. He's accused of turning down a tenant. All parties, please raise your right hand. People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Milian is now presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, ma'am. Okay, Ms. Chan, what happened here? Hi. Um, like, uh, there was a fire in my apartment. And uh, I Tell me about much, it. like lost most of my stuff. That's important. No, 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 no. Tell me about what caused the fire. How did the fire happen? What Give caused me the, the fire? I I have no idea what caused the fire. I I it was Okay, like, well why uh, don't you tell me how you realized there was a fire? Tell me what you were doing before that. Oh, um I was sleeping and um in in the middle of it like um I I was getting up and hear some noises like likely from the kitchen and I opened the door and there was like, you know, the fire was already like Wow, you know, it's all dark. I all I see is dark and smoke, and I got so scared that I, you know, just jumped out of the window. Yeah, that that was. What floor are you on? I I was on the third floor, but I was lucky the third, third floor. floor? Slide, you know, they have a slide going. Third floor, yes. Did, was there a fire escape? No. You jumped out of a third story. I jumped out of the third floor. That's correct. Did you break your bones? Um, I was lucky there was a slide, uh, there was a slide no, a slant. that, that going to the second floor, there's another slide, uh, that, slide. like on the roof, that, that, that go down to the slide. second floor and, and first floor, so I was lucky. Wow. Okay. Now, you said mm -hmm. you heard a noise in the kitchen. What had you been doing in the kitchen beforehand? Because you're, you're skipping that part, and I'm kind of interested in that. Um, I, I wasn't doing anything in the kitchen. Ma'am, did you oh, have a crock pot? Were you warming something? And did you fall asleep while something was warming in a crock pot? Uh, well, um, there is the cooking pot, um, that, that I was heating up, not heating up, but I kept in warm of the, uh, spaghetti. Uh, that I just kept in warm. I'm going to read and from your complaint and then your words, not mine. Mm -hmm. On the morning of November 25th, I woke up to make spaghetti on my crock pot. I brought my child to the bus stop, and when I got home, I put extra spaghetti in the crock pot to warm it up for myself. At around 9 a.m., I went back to my bedroom and fell asleep while watching YouTube videos. I woke up around 11, that's two hours later, and I heard something fall on the floor. I opened my bedroom door and saw a lot of smoke. All right, so you went to sleep at 9 with a crock pot on, and then you woke up at 11 with a fire in your kitchen. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Okay. Mr. Cespedes, did, how is it you learn about the fire? I was at work. I found, um, I got a phone call from one of my tenants underneath. He said that he heard a loud noise. He went upstairs to try to um, uh, advise the tenant that, uh, I mean, advise her. I didn't know she was living there. I actually rented it to her boyfriend. So she- Oh, really? He went in to try to tell them, hey, there's a fire going on. And um, all of a sudden, he uh, he called 911. He called me. He told me that he called 911. He advised me that, uh, that, that um, there was a fire. I, uh, I told my job about it, and I immediately went to the site. How many, how many uh, units are there in this building? There's two units. Okay. So he's the other tenant, and he, uh, how does he know that there's a fire? How had he seen it? 
Because I know you he told me you heard a, loud, a noise. He heard a loud bang. He went to And then he sees the smoke walk. when he goes upstairs? Yeah. Okay. So he calls 911. I presume the fire department came out. Does anybody have a report from the fire department? I actually lost it. I'm so sorry. Okay. And what did the fire department report say? It said that it was a defective crock pot. Okay. That started the fire. So, Ms. Chan, do you have the fire report? Um, I do not have the fire report, but I just submitted like uh, the the wet course. Uh, the wet course has a paper that indicate that there was a fire on the the day of November twenty fifth, and um and, and there was a fire at at the at, at the property. Okay. But I want the fire report that says it was your fault, because I'm wondering why you're suing Mr. Cespedes for $10,000 when you're the one who caused the fire. What is the reason why you're suing him? He should be suing you. I don't think I Were you insured? The Did the insurance end up covering your losses, Mr. Cespedes? No. So are you out money? <laughs> yes. I'm out one. <laughs> Ms. Ms. Chan, if, if you go to sleep watching YouTube videos and leave a crock pot on and the fire department concludes that it's your defective crock pot that causes the fire, what did the landlord do wrong? Um, well, initially, like, uh, I, I truly do not think that warmer would cause fire because uh, I was just putting it in a warmer because that's automatic. And then like that cannot cause fire. Well, no, that, if it's that, working that properly, it like can. But if it splits in two, it could cause a fire if it's got a defect. Uh, if it's working the right way, of course, it shouldn't cause a fire. Um, particularly when crock pots are meant to be slow cookers and you could put them on and you're supposed to be able to leave for work, come back and have a hearty meal. But if it's defective, that's a problem. And if you, you're there and you fall asleep and it becomes a big engulfing fire, that's also a problem. But let me just ask you a question. What did Mr. Cespedes, your landlord, do wrong that he should pay you $10,000? How did he um, cause the I fire? Was initially told, I was initially told that uh, there was something, the electrical problem in the back. I, initially, I was okay. told that. Who that told you that? Cold. My landlord. Yeah, and then later on he said something else. But then initially I was told it was the something in the back of the. Did you ever tell her that there was some electrical problems? Absolutely not. Okay. Did she? Did you talk to her that night or that day? The day that day. Yes, she wanted to come upstairs and she wanted to go through everything. I told her it was too dangerous that no one was allowed on the property. I didn't want no one to get hurt. Okay. And did she ever tell you, uh, did she tell you about the crock pot and falling asleep? No. She told how me. How did the police, how did the fire department conclude it? Did they talk to her? Yes, she was, they were there. They, they explained everything to her. The, the crock pot was on, on site. Did they take any pictures? Do you have any pictures? Unfortunately, I do not. I was so overwhelmed. With everything going on, there was a lot of people there trying to push themselves onto the job, and try I was just trying to get everybody away and safe, and my main concern that everybody's safety. Okay, but at some point you could take pictures once you know everybody's safe, um, but, you, <laughs> but you don't have pictures. <laughs> Ms. Chan, um, you say that he told you that, oh, it was in the wall, but you know you fell asleep with the crock pot, and you say he first, initially he told me that. What did the fire department tell you? Welcome back to the People's Court. I'm Harvey Levin. The plaintiff says the apartment she rented was torched by fire, and she blames it on faulty wiring. The landlord, the defendant, says no way. It was due to a rice cooker, and it is the plaintiff's fault. Let's go back into the courtroom. Uh, I never got in touch with the fire department. They, uh, Did you ever I see the fire department's question. report? How are you going to prove it's his fault if you um, don't have a fire department report that says uh, it was faulty wiring that the landlord neglected or something? Because it would have to be negligence on his part. It can't be an accident for him to have to pay you. So tell me what it is that leads you to believe it's his fault. Do you have any evidence 
from the fire department that the fire started in the wall and was the landlord's fault. Uh, when I last asked the fire department on the same day, uh, they told me they are still investigating. And um, like I told them what happened and uh, they said um, they, they, they did not give me uh, like uh, what actually happened. Uh, but okay, I but remember I from November of 2019 was... till August of 2020, you could have asked for a fire report because it exists. So do you have a fire report to show me today? To show, how are you going to prove it's his fault and that he has to pay you? Do you feel just because he's a landlord? You're not even his tenant. Your boyfriend was his tenant, I guess. So how is it that he has to pay you, a guest of the boyfriend, the, the tenant, why should he have to pay you $10,000 just because he owns the building? Well, um, like uh, it was an attic apartment and uh, I was told that something in the back of the that's electrical problem that was made. Okay, that's good. Now prove that. Can you prove that? Can you prove that? No, if you can't prove that, you oh. can't collect. Let me ask you a question. At some point, oh. you spoke to a lawyer and you offered her $1,500. Is that correct? That is correct. Why? I did feel bad for her. I did feel bad for the situation. I just, I wanted a peace of mind. I wanted every, I'm happy that everybody was safe. Did your lawyer mind. tell you to do that? No, my lawyer insisted for me not to do that. Correct. Okay. I just want to know if you need a new she, lawyer. She did not. Okay. So she did not he want to offered you $1,500 for your troubles. And you said, no, that's not enough. I want 10000 Oh, uh, But what I lost is more than that. Yeah, that's what I told I know. You. I and that's why people get renter's insurance. So did you have renter's insurance? No, I did not get, I did not get, yeah. I've never guessed yeah. what would happen, you know. Yeah. It was a little crazy. No, I understand. But here's the thing, though. Yeah. Nobody wants I, this I'm, to uh, No, nobody wants this to happen, least of all the person who owns the building. Um, you ended up leaving. You had some items burned. He had his building burned. From everything I can tell, the cause of the fire was probably the crock pot. I don't have an actual fire report. I would love to have an actual fire report. You no longer have the copy, which you should have kept as a homeowner. But you are the person who's suing. So that means you have what we call in court the burden of proof. It means you come into court and you have to prove what you're saying. And you come into court with that one stitch of evidence that it's his fault. I don't know if you thought just because he owns a place, he has to pay you. That's not the law. You would have to prove not only that it, you would have to prove it was his fault. That means not only did it happen in the walls and not in a crock pot that cracked and was defective, you would have to prove that he knew it and still didn't fix it. If it was just an accident, a landlord still wouldn't know you for what's burned. You need to have renter's insurance for that. If you choose, and renter's insurance is like $100, $150 for the whole year. But people don't do it, and it doesn't matter unless you need it, right? Insurance comes in very handy when you need it. So yeah. in this case, I am not going to order Mr. Cespedes to pay you $10,000. If I was your lawyer and you had offered her fifteen. dollars I would fire you as my client, Mr. Cespedes. And Ms. Chan, that's kind of an education for you because kind of looks like you should have taken the free money since there is no way that you can prove that you are entitled to one penny from him if you can't prove that the fire was his fault. When you fall asleep with something in the kitchen that the, the fire department, I think, tells you ended up cracking and was on the floor. But in any event, verdict for the defendant. So the judge finds against the plaintiff in this case who was suing for $10,000. Ms. Chan, let me ask you, what do you think about the judge's decision? What's your reaction? Yeah, I'm a little disappointed, but I think um, it's like I didn't have enough proof. I didn't work on my part yet. And, and I, my first time doing this, I have no idea what's needed. You learned a valuable lesson the hard way, my dear. Sorry. All right, Mr. Cespedes, I know you feel sorry for her, too. You did offer her money, but uh, how do you feel about the outcome of this case? Were you surprised to be sued by her? Extremely. And you can see how greed works. And now this is what she receives.
How badly was the building damaged? We, we thought maybe it was just in her apartment, but was it the building, whole building was affected? No, it was only her kitchen. It is, was her kitchen. Okay. Well, congratulations, sir. You have prevailed, and that's the judge's decision, and everybody's going to have to live by it. And with that, thanks very much. And now it's time for another session of After the Verdict. Well, uh, if you have a heart, you can't help but feel bad for the plaintiff in this case. Sure. It's a terrible thing. She has a fire in her apartment. She loses a lot of belongings, etc. But I have to say, if her crockpot started the fire and she is trying to get money from the landlord, it's kind of almost like being involved in, in a crime and making a play for the reward money with the authorities. <laughs> It was like, you know what I mean? It was a little bit, uh, yeah. it took a lot of chutzpah to do that and bring the claim potentially, Right. I suppose. You right. kind of saw it the same way, right? I did, and um, I, I, I don't know if it's from not understanding the law or not knowing the law or just this feeling that a lot of tenants have that, hey, it's your property, so whatever happens on it, you have to pay. Yeah, or you're, um, and that's and, why we have And you have to pay $10,000. Right. With no receipts. Right. You just have to, I'm just going to tell you it's worth $10,000. But, um, but that's what renter's insurance is for. Exactly. And, and she does have a potential claim for damages. It's called a product's liability claim. And it would be against the manufacturer, potentially, of the crock pot that went wrong. Right. If, in fact, that's what the conclusion of the fire department is, so it would behoove her in the last nine months and before she would file a product's liability case against whatever, we keep saying crockpot because that's like saying Xerox or yeah, Kleenex. I say that we have no idea who the, who the manufacturer is, but whoever the manufacturer right. of that slow cooker is, the slow cooker, if she right. could prove that it's in fact a defective uh, thing, that that's what the fire department concluded, then file a case against that. You don't see those in small claims. Those are expensive cases to put together. You require a lot of expert testimony, et cetera, to show that a product was really defective defectively designed or defectively manufactured, right? Absolutely. This is personal one. Have you ever been sued or have you ever sued anyone in small claims court? Uh, okay, I have sued once in small claims court and I won. <laughs> um, I've also been a uh, pro tem judge in small claims court. Um, but the problem with that was um, the cases went okay but the judge whose courtroom I used let me use his robe and he was significantly taller than me. And when I went up to the bench, I tripped and I ate it on the bench. That will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case inside the courtroom.